Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to check out another piece of gear and that is this little guy here which is the Goodson Moser Aircross 2. Now the Aircross 2 has actually been out for a little while, actually came out at the end of last year but Goodson just released it in a brand new color that they call Alpine White. I would call it Stormtrooper but it is pretty cool so this is a brand new color that's now available and because I haven't actually tried the gimbal before and Goodson offered to send it to me, by the way thank you very much for that. I figured, yeah, let's give this a try and see how it compares against some of the other gimbals as well as its bigger brother, the Air 2. The Goodson Moser Aircross 2 is a lightweight handheld camera stabilizer for both DSLR and mirrorless cameras. It costs 499 US dollars in this new Alpine white style and you can still get the older black variant for 449 dollars, so you're saving 50 US dollars if you don't want this particular Stormtrooper look. In this video I want to quickly go over the specifications for this gimbal and then I'm actually going to combine the field test as well as my verdict because I always find it's kind of odd to have those as separate sections so I'm going to show you some test footage shot with this gimbal and talk about what I like and don't like about it. As always you will find timestamps to everything down in the video description so you can jump to any place that you might find interesting. Also if you enjoy my content please hit that like button and subscribe it really helps out my channel and I greatly greatly appreciate it. But now, enough talking, let's jump into the video. The Goodson Moser Aircross 2 is a 3-axis handheld camera stabilizer for DSLR and mirrorless cameras. It costs 499 US dollars in this Alpine white look and you can get the original black version for 449 dollars. It's got a magnesium alloy body weighing in around about 2 pounds and that is without the battery which is about 950 grams and it's got a detachable tripod at the bottom so you can either stick that on for additional grip and putting it on a flat surface or you can take it off you know just to lessen the load. The motor of the Aircross 2 can support a payload of around about half a pound all the way up to 7 pounds which is about 300 grams to 3.2 kilos so it's pretty suitable for any small mirrorless cameras to have pretty full blown DSLR with a fat lens. It's got a three axis lock design where each axis on the gimbal has its own lock so you can kind of lock that in place which makes calibration and setup for the gimbal really nice and easy. An interesting thing with the Aircross 2 is that you can actually have it set up like this which is your standard setup but you can actually also mount your camera this way, uh, obviously you have it the wrong way around but you can actually use like a left handed design so you can attach cameras where the connections are all the way on the right and it does support a vertical mode as well if you're into shooting things like TikTok. In terms of mounting options you will find a quarter inch and a three quarter inch screw system you can kind of mount any camera you want but it does come included with a Manfrotto quick release plate so you can very quickly swap your cameras out or just take it off when you while you're carrying it around in your bag and then attach it back. Do note that this base plate is not the same as some of the other Manfrotto base plates so make sure you get the right system if you want something that you can then put on a tripod or somewhere else but it does make it nice and easy to kind of get your camera on and off and be set up and connected pretty quickly. In order to control the gimbal on the back you will find a thumb controller that you can use to aim your camera as well as a control wheel that allows you to adjust the sensitivity with which the gimbal will have the camera follow your movement. You can also press all four corners of this wheel to change the mode or lock individual axes. On the side you will find a smart wheel controller that will allow you to either control a follow focus system which you can attach to the mounting plate that is included with the Moser Aircross 2 but you can also you know control the tilt or other settings and parameters within the gimbal. It's fully customizable. On the front you will find a trigger button that allows you to easily reset the aim of your camera or if you trill press it it will actually bring the camera into selfie mode so you can film yourself or your friends and family as you're running out and about and then just double click it again and you'll reset back to normal. Just above the thumb controller you'll have your OLED screen that displays your current settings which axes are locked as well as what connectivity you may have set up and it allows you to then dig into the menu and set the gimbal up in any way that you want. In terms of connectivity the Aircross 2 has a USB port that you can plug your camera in to control it via the back controller and at the bottom here you will find two CAN ports that you can either use for the follow focus system or attach other equipment and there's another CAN controller right here on the side as well. So there's plenty of different ways to attach all sorts of things to this device. The battery for the device sits right here in the handle. It's rated to last you around about 12 hours and it charges up in about an hour and a half using USB-C. Goodson also offers a free app called Moza Master which actually allows you to set up motion lapses, remote control the gimbal and something that's pretty cool as well you can actually link the movement of the gimbal to the movement of your phone so this is it's called mimic control so you can actually control the exact movement of your gimbal 
directly from your phone. And this is actually a pretty intuitive way, kind of cool to kind of control your camera this way. I wish I could see the screen of the gimbal right here because right now I can't see what's coming through the camera. But again, it's actually pretty cool what you can do with just the app itself. So that's it for the raw specifications. Obviously, I also took the Moza Aircross 2 out to actually try it out in the wild. And now I want to give you a little bit of sample footage, some of the shots that I got with this gimbal, but also talk a little bit about some of the things that I liked and some of the things I didn't like about it. Let's jump right into the sample footage. I took all of these shots using the Moza Aircross 2 and my Canon 5D Mark III and a 24-70mm lens. Note that none of these shots have any extra stabilization applied to them, and I would say they actually do look pretty good already. Now, the Aircross 2 won't give you slider-like perfectly smooth shots right out of the box. You do still have to walk a bit carefully and be aware of how much you manhandle the gimbal itself. Also, personally, I find that adding just a little bit of stabilization in post-production, for me that's usually 5% or less of warp stabilizer in Premiere Pro, helps to iron out some of those small little kinks and corrective adjustments. And with that applied, you can get some really nice, smooth and cinematic shots with the Moza Aircross 2. One thing that I would really recommend when using this gimbal though, is to use a slightly heavier camera setup. The 5D with the 24-70mm lens is about 3.3 pounds or around about 1.5 kilos. For comparison, here's a couple of shots taken with a super light camera setup, which is my Sony Alpha 6500 with a 20mm f2.8 lens. Here you may notice a fair few more of those little corrective movements that kind of take away from that smooth cinematic feel. Also, I did have a few moments where the gimbal would kind of start to jitter and shake in a strange way when I held it at a very specific off-tilt axis. It would go back to normal when I changed my position back again or would simply drop into sleep mode and now I need to reset it to get it back up and working. Now, this only happened a couple of times and only when I used my super light camera setup, which does sit at the lower end of the supported weight spectrum, but it is something to be aware of. In terms of actually using the gimbal, something that I really like is that the gimbal is actually pretty light, especially if you compare it to something like its bigger brother, which is the Moza Air 2. Now, do know that the aluminum alloy body is actually just the axes here, as well as the feet. The main part here, that part is actually still plastic. I wish this was a bit more solid, but quite honestly, I think that's where they actually saved some of the weight of this gimbal. But it is comfortable in the hands, especially once you take the legs off. It's pretty light. Obviously, I've got a small camera on it as well, and it does support up to seven pounds or 3.2 kilos in weight. So you can put something pretty hefty on it. Personally, when I use it, I actually like to keep the legs on, mainly to hold onto them and stabilize. It just gives me nicer, more stable shots, and it just, it just makes using the gimbal a little bit more comfortable. With the feet detached, while it does drop a bit of weight, I found it a bit... It was not quite as easy to hold the gimbal really nice and smooth. I like the extended grip just because I felt more stable, and I got smoother shots out of that way. But this is, this is pretty light. I can easily handle this with just a single hand. Now, I really like that this particular design for the Aircross 2, in comparison to the Air 2, has locks on every single axis. It just makes setting it up so much easier. You always lock two axes, leave one loose, you calibrate it and configure it, make sure that's nicely balanced. Then you can lock that axis, unlock another one and control it. Now, one thing I did notice though with some of these screws here, especially if you do set up your camera right wood, Depending on how much distance you have, some of these screws start getting away in some of the cabling and some of the other pieces of your camera. So for me personally, I prefer to just go with the standard setup, but it really depends on what type of equipment you're trying to mount onto it. I really enjoyed the physical controls on the Moza Aircross 2. I thought it was quite a bit more thought through than the Air 2, mainly because the locking of the individual axis is just a press on this little round rotary button here rather than trying to press down on the thumb controller, which I never really worked for me, probably because I've got fat fingers. But it is really easy to switch modes, you know, to go into inception mode. All you do is triple press one side and you're in inception mode, which is, you know, your typical gun forward mode. You can also just set it to auto rotate and it'll automatically rotate at a set speed. So you don't have to kind of try to control the equal movement with one hand or the other. Now, the one thing I personally always seem to struggle with is actually get the camera connected to the gimbal. I can usually get basic controls like the record start stop happening, but often more detailed controls like the shutter speed, your aperture, ISO, or other more fine game controls. Even though I'm using the multi C USB connector and I'm running through the steps as outlined in the manuals, it never really quite seems to work. So I can get record start stop going, but it does depend on the camera. So this is the Sony Alpha 6500. 
Some of the things don't seem to quite work. I've done it with my Canon 5D and I did get shutter aperture and ISO to work on that. So just be aware, check the compatibility list. But even then, sometimes things may not work quite as well as you want them to. But quite honestly, usually I just set the camera on record and then it's all just about the physical controls and the feel of the gimbal that to me really makes the biggest difference. Now, in summary, because a lot of people are going to look at this gimbal and go, should I buy it? Should I not? I personally like this gimbal over some of the bigger ones like the Moza Air 2. The Xeon Crane is like a special category, but it is a much bigger gimbal. So if you want something really big and sturdy, I would go with the Xeon Crane over the Moza Air 2. But if you want something a little bit lower and a bit cheaper, the Moza Aircraft 2 is actually a pretty good option. Now, I wish the main body here was aluminum, not this plastic -y feel, but the three axis lock design, the physical controls really well laid out. It's, it's nice and easy to get some really nice shots. If you want to splurge $50 extra and go for $4.99, you can get this nice Alpine White or Stormtrooper color, as I like to call it. Otherwise, $449 US dollars will get you the black version. It is worth checking out. Check out some more sample footage on YouTube in the internet. There's tons of it. Just to make sure that you're getting what you really want out of it. I enjoyed using it. But yeah, just check out some other videos. Make yourself smart. Or just ask questions down below and I'll try to answer what I can. And that's all there is to it. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to watch more, just click these links over on the right hand side. If you want to support me, what I do on this channel, be sure to check out all of the links down in the video description. And as always, thank you very much for watching and until next time, I will see you later.